leaders to give them more authority. They've been <sighs> producing uh, lackluster games and getting government money for that. And a notable example for that one would be um, the what led up to a game called Depression Quest. That was created and that by was Zoe a, Quinn, right? That was the same Zoe woman that Quinn. got in front of the UN and basically he, said that calling someone via their pre-transition name, a transgender person, is the equivalent of a hate crime or cyber violence. So if you get up on Twitter and call Caitlyn Jenner Bruce, then you're committing a, an act of cyber violence. And they're literally now calling for the UN to censor these people. Oh, yeah, it's, it's getting bloody ridiculous. Of course, uh, a lot of people earlier on were saying, oh, she's not relevant. She's not relevant. Problem is, she's a part uh, of a little thick group that was uh, called uh, Feminist in Games and started a little thing called Dames Making Games, which is... Which okay, is we'll pushy. be back with Theodore Morgan Major on the Alex Jones this Show live. From Express. We're back live on the Alex Jones Show. It's Paul Joseph Watson. We're talking to Theodore Morgan Major about the Gamergate scandal. Now, if you missed it, I put out a video a couple of days ago about how feminists got before the UN. And bear in mind, you know, I get tweets, I get Facebook messages from people saying, feminists have no power, they have no influence, just ignore them, they will go away. Well, not true. They're embedded deeply within the education system in America with gender studies. And now they're going to the UN to try and pressure the UN to censor websites. And this is important because ICANN, which is the organization in charge of domain names on the internet, is basically coming to the end of its contract with the US government. So that is going to be up for grabs. The UN has uh, intimated its agenda to try and get control of ICANN, to try and get control of the internet. So then last week you had these feminists who were involved fundamentally in the Gamergate scandal, Anita Sarkeesian and Zoe Quinn, basically getting up before the UN and saying, people who say you suck or you're a liar on Twitter, those people need to be censored. So criticizing radical feminism to them is hate speech, is quote, cyber violence. You know, calling Caitlyn, Brent, Caitlyn Jenner Bruce, that's a hate crime. That needs to be censored by the United Nations. And yes, they don't have power over the internet right now. But if you read the Washington Post, the United Nations has a radical, dangerous vision for the future of the web. And this is not Infowars.com, this is the Washington Post saying that if they get control of this, if they are able to pressure national governments into forcing Facebook and Twitter to proactively police profiles and posts for content that might be critical, God forbid, towards radical feminists like Anita Sarkeesian and Zoe Quinn, then the censorship is coming. And this is why feminists do have influence, because they're listened to by major political bodies who have influence and power. They're not just ranting on Tumblr. They're not just ranting on Twitter. We can't just ignore them and brush them off as crazy lunatics because they are being listened to by the likes of the United Nations, by Google. Google had a, an ideas panel recently where they, quote, wanted to take on internet harassment. And of course, the people they consulted for this program are key participants in harassing people on the internet. We're talking about feminists, for example, in Canada, who out people for saying that somebody who makes a video game, an online video game in which the participants are able to punch Anita Sarkeesian in the face, maybe shouldn't you know, be doxxed. Their address shouldn't be revealed. They shouldn't be subjected to physical harassment. That guy in Canada is now facing six months in prison for disagreeing with feminists, while the feminists who encourage people to harass this young teenager in Canada, they're, you know, they're vaunted professionals of you know, oppression Olympics, and they're the kind of people who are being listened to by Google, by the UN, in terms of censoring anything that's critical of feminists or merely disagreeing with them on the internet, which is why this is a threat, which is why Gamergate is a massive issue and why people should understand it 
And I made a video about this a couple of days ago, and we're going to go to this clip now before we return to our guest. So let's go to the clip. Feminists want the UN to censor the internet to prevent cyber violence. But what does Anita Sarkeesian define as harassment and cyber violence? Harassment is, as someone had mentioned, it's not just what is legal and illegal, right? Harassment is uh, threats of violence, but it's also the day-to-day -day grind of you're a liar, you suck, you, you know. That's right, criticizing feminists or calling them out on their b by saying they suck or they're liars now constitutes cyber violence. And remember, this is the same woman who thinks everything is sexist, everything is racist, everything is homophobic, and you have to point it all out. And what does Zoe Quinn define as harassment and cyber violence? Trans women often face a very specific type of violence called dead naming, where people post pre-transition pre names. So under this definition, referring to Caitlyn Jenner as Bruce will be treated as hate speech. Because it's not Bruce Jenner, it's Caitlyn, and she's a stunning woman. They're actually calling for laws and Chinese style internet censorship to shut down anyone who hurts their feelings by disagreeing with them on the internet. They got me in tweets and it hurt their feelings, and so they had to go to the UN and they had to whine about it. I'm triggered. The UN wants governments to use their quote, licensing prerogative to ensure that telecoms and search engines are only, quote, allowed to connect with the public if they, quote, supervise content and its dissemination. So if an ISP or search engine doesn't comply with UN mandated censorship of anti-feminist content, they'll be cut off from being accessible by the public altogether. The likes of Twitter and Facebook will be forced to, quote, proactively police every profile and post reports the Washington Post. And if you think that's unimaginable, then just look at Canada, where a man faces six months in prison for the crime of disagreeing with feminists on Twitter. 54-year-old Greg Elliott was also banned from using the internet for the duration of the trial. And all this will be overseen by an agency which just appointed Saudi Arabia to head a key UN human rights panel, the country that is about to crucify a 17-year-old for taking part in an anti-government protest. But of course, these new rules won't apply to feminists. They'll still be free to call for the genocide of men or putting us all in concentration camps while making bomb threats against weight loss companies and Gamergate meetups. So feminists will be free to continue to make death threats against anyone who doesn't embrace their radical ideology. But don't you dare tell Anita Sarkeesian that she sucks or the UN thought police will be knocking at your door. Everything is sexist, everything is racist, everything is homophobic. Everything is sexist. Everything's offensive to people like me. Let's go through the checklist. It's all misogyny. There you have it. Everything is racist. Everything is sexist. Everything is homophobic. That was Anita Sarkeesian, and she got up in front of the UN and basically said that anyone who accuses feminists of lying or saying you suck should be subject to internet censorship, should have their posts, should have their profiles removed after the United Nations pressures national governments to have that happen. So again, when people say to me, these feminists are just insane, they have no influence, they have no power, just ignore them, they will go away. No, they're up in front of the United Nations who could be about to seize control of the internet and pressure governments to censor people for criticizing feminism. And they talk about cyber touch, you know, mean tweets being as bad as someone actually physically reaching through the computer screen and punching somebody in the face. We're talking to our guest Theodore uh, Theodore Morgan Major, who is a, a researcher within Gamergate, and this is the movement which Anita Sarkeesian, or at least the backlash to it, has, has prompted. What did you think when you saw feminists saying we should censor people who say you suck on the internet? That's crazy, right? Do we have Theodore? We may have lost Theodore. We're going to go to some callers now. 
who wants to talk about video games and how they're being used to brainwash the public. Taylor in Michigan, you're on the air. Go ahead, Taylor. Hey, uh, yeah, I wanted to point out some key examples of the predictive programming and, and basically the desensitizing that the video games are using. You know, InfoWars has well documented how the military in the streets is desensitizing us to when they completely take over the government systems. And it's the same thing in the video games because they're desensitizing us for what's coming and what's coming that they're showing really isn't that far down the path. Um, For instance, in Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3, it starts out in the intro with the M in Modern Warfare 3 flipped, and it's World War 3. And then it flips to M, and you're starting out in the first level fighting the Russians in New York City, and they have uh, electronic jamming systems on top of the U.S. stock exchange, and you are Delta Force, and you have to go and take down the jamming system. And this takes place in August of 2016. And, you know, it was mainstream news that the main things that the Russians are working on in terms of technology is uh, electronic jamming systems, anti-drone weapons. And um, then you go to Homefront right here. (laughs) This video game is ridiculous. It's okay. It's home front on the back of the video game. America has fallen to a savage military occupation. Join the resistance and fight for freedom. The year is 2027. You know, I think it would actually probably help if you could, if you guys could like uh, Google home front video game intro. I'm sure they probably have it on YouTube. It starts off with Hillary Clinton and uh, it's like a, it's like a three minute uh, intro and it is just totally ridiculous. It shows uh, gas going to $20 a barrel. It goes like year by year in a quick like montage edit of just America completely falling. But then um, in uh, Black Ops 2, Call of Duty Black Ops 2, you're fighting against all drones and all robots, and it takes place in 2025. And this is kind of a common theme, this 2025 getting to the 2020s, and they're showing you exactly what's going to happen. And the main thing is right, you can we'll look at... We'll uh, get our guest response to that after the break. With the geopolitical stuff, I think they just try to make these video games like the most insane, crazy scenario you can imagine with ISIS, with Russia, so that's why they do that. We're going to talk more about the social re-education agenda in video games after the break. This is The Alex Jones Show Live. Stay tuned. We're back live on The Alex Jones Show. I'm your host, Paul Joseph Watson. Again, support us by buying the products at InfoWarsStore.com. Of course, we had the recent money bomb. But it's essential that you continue to support us by buying the products, by getting your subscription to PrisonPlanet.tv. Of course, a lot of stuff you see uploaded to the YouTube channel, extra features, extra bonus features, the whole show at prisonplanet.tv, special reports, speeches, all kinds of stuff. It's been going for about 10, 11 years now, and that really helps us build the platform to challenge the mainstream media narrative, hire more reporters, and have a bigger impact. And Alex Jones talked about the fact that, you know, we have some 41 million people visiting the website in a monthly period. We need to build on that. We've come so far but we need your continued support to build that platform just to have the presence to challenge these narratives which are still owned by the mainstream media because they, of course, coalesce together. They support each other. They echo. They parrot each other. We don't do that. We're a lone voice with our own opinion, with our own viewpoints, and we need your support. So please buy the products at InfoWarsStore.com and get your subscription at PrisonPlanet.tv. We're talking about Gamergate. We're talking about how Anita Sarkeesian and Zoe Quinn, these two radical feminists who were integrally involved in the Gamergate scandal, basically got up before the UN and said, We need to pressure the UN to pressure national governments, which the United Nations has agreed to do. That's their agenda. That's their policy to censor the Internet, to prevent ISPs from even having access to the public if they refuse to censor anti-radical feminist content. 
And the examples, as 